From the Czech Republic, Petra Kvitova has been on fire. She won her last tournament in Linz. In order to get here, she came in riding that wave of emotion, and she has been playing phenomenal tennis. A few minor hiccups and speed bumps along the way, but nothing that has defeated her. She is a perfect 4-0. Meanwhile, across the net from her will be Victoria Azarenka, who herself is looking to get up the number two position in the world, win the biggest title of her career. It's going to be a full-out hard-fought match today. Once again, Kevin Skinner alongside Renee Stubbs. You already heard from Katrina Adams, who will be courtside in Renee. Sometimes we try to build these matches up to gain a little bit of enthusiasm from everybody, but we don't even need to say anything. This is the match everyone's thought this week we should be playing. No question. This is a big one, not only for the title, but also one of these young ladies with a victory today will move to the number two spot in the world and they both know that as well and they really are knocking on the door of number one i feel that petra kvitova is the slight favorite going into this event into this final reasons being she hasn't lost a match she loves the indoors and i just feel like when things are going her way she tends to really really put the gas down and she's done that at the early part of this year and now i feel like almost booking and book ending it with a perfect season towards the end. Bit of a ready to go and you can't blame her. She's been riding that way from Lens right in here undefeated. It's Victoria Azaranka who's taking her time. Maybe a little mind game to put her player on hold. But now well, she joins. All right, ladies, usual conditions. The After the toss, please, let's face that way for a couple of photos, OK? Any questions? Vika, you want to choose? Heads. That's heads. Receive. Receive. Stay. So listen, stay for a few photos and then on your own as well. Thank you. And now just the two of you. Thank you. Now smiles as they have to be excited, but then it'll be down to business as they head to their respective ends to warm up. And this championship just a few minutes from getting underway in Istanbul. Well, they can also see very quickly when they stand next to each other like that. They're both very tall women, almost identical height. It's the final match, the championship of the Teb BMP Paribas WTA Championships here in Istanbul, Turkey. Sinan Erdem Dome has hosted this competition all week long, and it has just come down to two. Kvitova, Azarenka, to see who will be the 2011 champion. Uh, it's a storied history, the 41st edition of this event, which is arguably the most prestige in, prestigious in women's tennis. And you look at the names of the players who have won in just the last few years. Major champions all amongst them. Kim Kleisters with a pair, book ending in 2003 and 2010. Serena Williams also, along with Sharapova, Moresmo, Anna. You could go back and name pretty much any of the greats in women's tennis. Renee, this is a coveted title. No question. And the one interesting one there, possibly for Azarenka, is is Emily Moresmo. She won the event in Los Angeles, as you saw a number of years ago, and then really went on to have a terrific Grand Slam year the next year. 
Petra Kvitova, the 21-year-old from the Czech Republic. Her hometown is Bilovec, just six miles to the west of where she resides now in Fulnek. It's been a terrific year. Finished outside the top 30 in 2010, has marched all the way up to number three in the year and is pushing, as Renee said, towards that number two position. She will finish ahead of Maria Sharapova no matter what. And the reason for her ascension this year has been the marvelous results. Five titles starting the year off with a title in Brisbane, matching that in Paris, Madrid, Linz, and then the Wimbledon title. Yes, and the interesting thing for me is every single one of those tournaments that she won had some type of a roof available to it or over it. The indoor events in Linz and Paris, both indoors. Madrid, Brisbane is kind of an indoor tournament. They say it's an outdoor tournament, but for me it's a little bit more indoors than outdoors. And uh, the Wimbledon title, it also is, has a roof available to it. Never appeared before. She is 4-0. All four matches she's played here this week. Well, she's been victorious. We'll show you those matches because they are important. She started her runoff against Vera Zvonareva, ran it off 6-2, 6-4 with a very impressive performance, then took on the world number one, Wozniacki, just reversed those scores in order. A 4-2 victory against Radvanska. That was a little tougher affair. Radvanska had her 5-1 down in the first set. She was looking very much out of it not concentrating on the tennis, knowing that she was already into the semifinals. But it also showed her fighting spirit that she wanted to not only win, but not lose that set and came running back and won that set 7-6, which dashed the hopes of Radwanska to make it through to the final four. And a terrific match yesterday with Samantha Stoza. Really, really great display of women's tennis. Impressive by Kvitova coming back from a set down to move through unblemished. Meanwhile, Victoria Azarenka, from Belarus, born in the town of Minsk, in the center of the country, the capital city of 9.5 million. The 22-year-old also vying for that number two position. She, too, will finish ahead of Sharapova. It's just a matter of whether she can get past Kvitova to take over the number two spot or join a former career high, what was just last month at number three in the world. And she, too, has been very impressive. Back-to-back -back titles in Miami and Marbella, and then won Luxembourg before coming here to Istanbul that tournament in Miami and then the very following week in Marbella she went from hardcourt to clay but she likes to go back to back in her winning and that Luxembourg event was last week so she's trying to do the same thing here to win her biggest title of her career. It's her third appearance. She had only mustered one victory in 2009 and 2010. One win each, and then unceremoniously, if you can, bounced out of the tournament. And this year, she has turned everything around. She does have one loss, but ultimately, she's had a very good run here in Turkey. Really almost unstoppable in that first match against Stoza and Lee Na, really showing the class that she was coming into this event with. And when Ian Luxembourg, she had a bit of a hiccup against Marianne Bartoli, who was an alternate, and put in in front of Sharapova when she pulled out. And Marianne Bartoli was just, you know, inspired, really, really gave it everything she got. But she absolutely came in and really did her business in the semifinals against Vera Zvonareva. Yeah, didn't need to worry about the result of the Bartoli match. She had already secured her position in the final four, but that's kind of a tough way to be handed a loss, but she rebounded against Zvonareva. Now, meanwhile, Kvitova versus Azarenka. This is the third time they're meeting in 2011. Kvitova having won actually three in a row, twice in Wimbledon the last two years, including in the semifinals this year in three sets to go on to win the title all out the door now when they're playing in the finals of this event and Ava Azdaraki very much seated in that chair and controlling the moments out here today and what a big match for both of the women no Vika, no Petra, simply Ava they love even the umpires here in Turkey and I have to just say Kevin what an amazing crowd we have again today for the finals it's absolutely packed to the rafters Literally, and I know for you that's quite encouraging and has to make everybody associated with the WTA and the Turkish Tennis Federation feel pretty good about the first of three years hosting this season ending championships. Even the, the doubles final today was almost at capacity, which was very encouraging as well. The Turkish people really embracing women's tennis. It's the championship of the Teb BMP Paribas 
WTA Championships Istanbul. As the final match will decide who will have their name etched on the trophy in 2011. Will it be Petra Kvitova of the Czech Republic or will it be that young lady Victoria Azarenka of Belarus. It's all on the line today. And these are the two most deserving through the course of this week. A round robin format that's played over four days. Two groups of four split into the red and white group were decided on side? Sunday. The they played Tuesday through that? Friday. The two best players from each group met in the semifinal format. And Azarenka and Kvitova emerged as the two players to vie for the title. This really is um, the young players that are out here today are the next stepping stone of the greats of the women game. And I, I, I, I, I, I, going to be standing in her way. Well, she's certainly going to start by trying to upset the balance of Kvitova's game. She served very well, has the check, but it was the Belarusian who won the toss. Elected to receive, she'll stand at the top of your screen as the championship from Istanbul is underway. broadcast team we had the pleasure of seeing her earlier during the pre-match interviews she's courtside Katrina Adams well Kevin I had the pleasure of speaking with both the coaches and for David the coach of Petra he said it's simple she needs to serve well and use her lefty serve but for today's match she needs to use a lot more variety You know, Vika has had some good results in the past, but it's about today. It's about her coming out here and showing how well she can play, be consistent, and be aggressive. Thank you, Katrina. Let's see how the coach's vision for this match plays out. some different pace and the reason why is that she hits the ball so well from the baseline with pace but Vika Azarenka loves that she feeds off it so we will see some variety of the slice and the drop shot today she doesn't really have top spin to get the ball above the shoulder of Azarenka so not a lot of variety in the covid of a game we'll see it today against Vika Azarenka. She has to hit that one out wide very well today. Yesterday, she on a big point or two, she could kind of get away with that against Stoza because Stoza's back end is not her strength. Today, a different story. champion you would think that she you would possibly say handles the bigger matches better because as a rank has never been to a grand slam final but even having said that i can tell you both of these young ladies will be as nervous as one another Pick up this title. It hasn't really been.
been difficult to look back over the history of the 41 years this event's been held and look for players from the Czech Republic that have done well here, to say the least. Technically, three titles to this land that Petra Kvitova comes from. Martina Navratilova winning back-to-back -back titles in 78, 79 before she became a naturalized citizen in the United States and picked up another six. And Jana Novotna won this title back in 1997. For Belarus, well, Victoria Azarenka continues to write a whole new history for that nation as she would look to become the first ever from her country Seven, to win the year-end championships. Here's Natasha Zvereva back in the day. Made it to the championships a number of times, won it a lot of times in doubles. But this is writing a new history for the Belarusian co uh, country. really rewrite everything in singles and become the first champion in singles and get up to number two in the world at the same time and that's the formidable task to take on that woman today and that to me is going to be the big difference i feel for the day if azarenka does not serve well she is going to be in trouble closure Fitness, everything is improved under the guidance of Sam Simic, her coach, former Vera Zvonareva coach. She's done a great job with getting Vika Azarenka to the top echelons of women's tennis. It's a partnership that began back in 2010. Azarenka finished for the second straight year inside the top 10, but obviously with the results that have come through 2011, she has elevated herself in, in amongst the elite players. Chomping on her gum also in that shot is ex-pro player Maylin Tu, who happens to be Vika's agent and Sam Simic's wife. So let's just say the success of Vika Azarenka really does help that household in many ways. forehand she can be so devastating just two winners already in the early stages and both coming from that side players are starting to learn to fear that forehand really appreciating the, the tennis that we're seeing. Well, Renee Kvitova was responding to her coach with that last drop shot. He said it's very important that she uses the whole court and change up the pace. She caught Vika on her heels. Obviously, on this side of Vika has a wrench on the back end. She can go either way with that back end, cross or down the line, very easily. Mm 
And often I will talk about the double faults and why they come and there's no question that the return game of, v of uh, Petra Kvitova will cause a lot of double faults today. about the return she's been strong winning 61 percent of those break opportunities that is a very very high number out of her mouth which is the Czech word for come on really really important for Azarenka to serve well today because the return game of Kvitova is so dangerous I'm ready to say 15 months Victoria Azarenka has a tremendous return of her own. The difference is it's negated by the very big left-handed serve of Petra Kvitova. So when she has any kind of an opportunity, she has to make the return. Stoza, both Stoza and Kvitova really have the big serves of anybody here in the tournament and that has really helped Kvitova throughout the tournament. The indoor surface is getting quicker and quicker as the week has gone on. And I'll explain how and why that has happened. and a lot of players were talking about it being rough and then throughout this tournament because there's been so much play on the, the court not only with practice and with matches that roughness to the court has started to become smoother and so when that happens the ball doesn't grab on the court and it's shooting through and Petra Kravitova and Azarenka do like the faster court
Back in Istanbul for the Teb BMP Paribas WTA Championships. A lot of prize money, $5 million to be exact, to be split up amongst the players. Ten. And Petra Kvitova wins this match. She will be perfect and win $1.75 million. Runner up, she'll get 890,000. Now, Azarenka, a little discrepancy in her numbers because she lost her match to Bartoli, so she can't ascend all the way to that 1.75 million, but, but she'll get pretty close. It's still a good payday if she's champion at 1.6. So I don't think she'll be ruining that decision or that loss too much. But what she does want, she wants a win, and she hasn't been able to get on the scoreboard yet as she serves at Love 3. Yeah, I'd take the one loss if she were to win that match, then be undefeated and lose in the final. So that's all thrown out the door now. Yeah, let's go back to your point a moment ago about why the girls like the surface right now. You're saying basically as if it was a rough sort of texture on top of the surface that's been worn down maybe like sandpaper or something to polish it off that makes it slicker and quicker yeah if you think about sandpaper and when you use it what happens with it those little granules of sand almost they become worn down and they disappear they disappear and that's sort of what this surface is like types of boards on the court and it's it's, um, it's hard to describe unless you walk on it but uh, that's exactly what happens and throughout the week Petra Kvitova I had a little word to before the match today and I said how's the court playing she said it's definitely gotten faster through the week I also asked her, is it similar to the tournament you won in Linz? The similar, similar uh, similarities with that tournament and this one, she said, almost identical. So definitely helping her. Victoria Azarenka won the lead up tournament in Luxembourg. The surface is just a little bit different there. So if you want to give the edge as far as surface and how they like it, you probably have to give it to Kvitova, but very similar. of a roof whether it was actually closed or at least available she's won every single tournament this year with a roof available to her so maybe it's a superstitious thing as well oh. Victoria as a ranker no question likes to play oh, indoors as well oh, having won that oh. tournament just last week in Luxembourg but the only difference that I feel if I had to pick somebody today would be Kvitova is the serve it really is so effective for someone like Petra Kvitova who really has a big serve. Vika Azarenka's serve is not necessarily her, one of her weapons. Oh. Now you get a first serve in there. Oh. That was a pretty good serve. 151 kilometers, not huge, but it just comes back almost twice as hard. Philip Burke, chairman of the All England Long Tennis Club in Wimbledon, where Patrick Vitova was the champion this year, watching his reigning queen about to break Azarenka for a four love lead. Seven unforced errors and broken twice. Well, I was just thinking, well, that's a great serve down the tee. Really giving herself now an opportunity for an easy second shot, which is what we've seen for Petra Kvitova throughout this match, and then duffs the easy forehand. So not a terrific start for Azarenka. 
It's the final day of voting. If you go to Facebook.com slash WTA, you can vote for your favorite singles player, your favorite doubles team, your breakthrough player of the year. It's on the WTA page at Facebook.com. WTA voting ends today, so cast your ballot. Perhaps for Petra Kvitova, she could potentially win two different awards. She's up for singles player of the year and breakthrough player of the year. coaching of David Kutcher, her coach. They've been together for the last three years and I was talking to Dave Taylor this morning who's Sam Stoza's coach and he said, you know, that guy just doesn't get enough credit and I think it's because he's very, very silent in what he does. He's, he's a terrific influence over her. We have a really good relationship, he's almost like a father figure to her on the road and look at the job that he's doing with his young charge and there he is. Very, very content today. Oh, yeah. Disappointment early for Vika Azarenka as she tries to settle herself and not succumb to the pressure of just being completely overrun Time. here in this opening set. Look at the numbers, Renee Stubbs. It has been given a plus six in the differential to winners and errors, and Azarenka seven unforced errors broken twice. Well, it's not a massive discrepancy, really, when you look at the score line. But uh, it seems to me that she's just winning all the big points. Yeah, when the points are necessary and... Uh, Petra has to come up with something big. She has been true. It has been pure hitting. She has really pushed Azarenka around. That's where it's hard for Vika Azarenka because she's probably thinking, what do I really need to do here? Maybe increase the winners. That's about the only thing. Difficult to do against the heavy ball of Kvitova. A hold the serve wouldn't hurt. There's no question. A lot of first serves and no unforced errors on the Love. second shot. Like there, and the easy one that she missed to go down for love. She cannot afford to do that kind of stuff today. Not against someone like Petra Kvitova, who's really in the zone. It's the most animated we've seen Sam Simic the entire tournament. Very verbose right now. On this Last year, in the third round, saw Kvitova winning a tough opening first set, 7-5, and a despondent Azarenka was shut out 6-love in the second. This year it was a topsy-turvy performance in the semifinals at Wimbledon. some of their matches. Absolutely, but a uh, very different player in Kvitova right now, having won that Wimbledon title and that, the immense confidence that you have to have when you win a Grand Slam title. Crowd, 
She has a ring of on every time she wins a point. They want a match as well. They want this to be competitive. Every, almost every match this week has been very competitive. The crowd have loved every minute of it. So they want one here in the final, that's for sure. serve finally you can see how much this means to her she's not going to go away tremendous fighting spirit you don't get to number four in the world without having that so Kvitova will try to serve to take this opening set as she has been performing marvelously when she's gotten that first serve in which she's done 67 percent of the time winning eight of ten they want to see they have just been ignited all week long and tonight wow it's amazing a full house Is it down there? It's extremely loud because I can't even hear you. <laughs> it's amazing. No one's ever said that to me. <laughs> <laughs> write that one down. Situation by some unforced errors, and that hasn't happened too much in the first set. Incrementally trying to find her way back in this opening set, and that's the fight of the Belarusian, not willing to concede. It is still a 5 2 lead in favor of the three seed.
solid year for Vika Zarenka, picking up her sixth, seventh, and eighth titles of her career by winning in Miami, Marbella, and last week in Luxembourg. Tom. She's trying to become just the third player this year to win four or more titles and join the likes of Caroline Wozniacki and her opponent, Petra Kvitova. The Dane with six titles to her credit, the Czech with five, as Azarenka mounting the comeback from five love down, serving to close the gap to 5-3. And winning a set six love is great, but sometimes you're almost waiting for the shoe to drop because you're almost perfect. So I don't know if this is a positive for Kvitova or not to lose those two games. It depends on how much of a comeback has a rental from Melk. But a good one for Azarenka just to get onto the board and feel just a little bit better. That set must have been feeling like it was going very quickly. Faults now for Azarenka. That doesn't help her cause as she tries to continue this first set. Half chance for Kvitova. She's looking for her third break. first set six love it's like okay can I, I can't get any better than that and it's almost good to have that hiccup at the end of the first set than early in the second two set points time right now. She knows the importance of this very point. job by Vika Azarenka to hang around in this first set. Broken 
should finally finish things off for if Victoria Ozerenka has done enough to spoil this opening set for the Czech. Well, this is a little bit reminiscent of the match with Stoza yesterday where Kvitova really was in early command of the match, up a break, serving out of her mind, and then Stoza just hung around long enough and then ended up winning the first set. This is what started to happen with Stoza as well, just mistakes off of the racket. She doesn't really have game plan B, it's all or nothing. And when it's on, as you saw early in this match, it's absolutely unbelievable. But then all of a sudden, the wheels come off, and it's her ability to be able to get that back. But a great job from Azarenka. sense that Azarenka could see exactly where that ball was going. This is where you'll see Kvitova. She has to make a decision quickly right here. Am I going to play safe or am I going to go for it? Back on serve. With triple break point. Already one of one. Tam ten game byl výborný, to si neudělala nic špatně, jo. A ono je rozdíl to dotahovat a pak to teda jako otočit, jo. Takže teď, teď je třeba zůstat v klidu a zase, teď si na ten svůj servis zase zbytečně začala spěchat, jo. Teď jí, ona už tam stojí, nechí tam stát, vydejchej se a pak jděte prv na return. A teď bych šel do returnu a normálně zahrál všechny returny, zahraj normálně do ní, jo. Do ní do prostředka, pokud to půjde. A když tě požene, nebo když bude rally, vy, využij tam zase ten chop. Jeden, dva chopy a ten další míč zase stisknout. Aby to nechodilo furt stejně. Jo? To, co hraješ, když potřebuješ prostě držet výměnu. Return do prostředka, hodně míčů křížem, backend vyměnit s chopem a když to bude, tak jdeš dopředu. Jo? Tohle to vydrž. No tak, když je volný celý kurt, tak hraj tam, kde není, rozumíš, jednať běží. Jo? Když tam stojí v jednom koutě, tak nemá cenu hrát proti mě. Jo? Zase, jednoduché věci, nic, nic velkého nevymýšlej. Jdeme do ní, dáš to teď. He just has that way about him, doesn't he? He comes out, he looks like he's just having a stroll, They're sitting down in the park, discussing life. A really good influence over him. Maybe he should have come out at 5-2. But, big game here. Bit of 
Riva, who was finding her ground strokes. A bit of this unforced error is starting to accumulate now as she is even in the differential. And Azarenka is improving considerably as her winner's total starts to elevate. match and that must feel very refreshing to Azarenka. like that. It's more about what Kvitova is doing and not doing, more so than what Azarenka is doing. Kvitova was on fire, just hitting winner after winner, and then all of a sudden, Azarenka started to get a couple balls in play. Kvitova started to miss, and then she started to get tight. And you can just see her back to hand acceleration has slowed down tremendously, which is what's forcing her to hit a lot of these balls over the baseline. And Azarenka now has a nice rhythm to her game. You're right, Katrina. I mean, if you just look at the numbers, at one point, Kvitova had nine winners to three errors. Since then, just two winners and ten unforced errors. she can play sometimes and then all of a sudden for five games she looks like she shouldn't even be in the top 50 in the world and her ability to be able to handle these situations is the difference I feel getting this back on track They sort of give you the same outcome at some point. As 
Queen is not really doing anything differently than what she was in the first four or five games. She's kind of making a lot of shots. Her win to winner unforced error ratio hasn't changed that much. It's just so night and day with Kvitova. Is there any chance that Petra now is relaxed because she's not serving for the set anymore? The two times she did, she was broken. Possibly. Patrick Kvitova in her debut at the BNP Paribas Teb WTA Championships here in Istanbul. As some of her fans, perhaps not traveling all the way from the Time. Czech Republic, not sure. We'll have to check their passports, but nonetheless, they are big fans of the woman who has won five titles this year. And that was a must hold game for the three seed that ends. That dramatic climb back from love five down for Azarenka and puts Petra in the lead 6-5 where Azarenka getting her first serve in 74% of the time and when she has done so she has won 15 of the 26 points put in play. This is a must hold now for her so that she can maximize the potential on this dramatic comeback. So you can go back to hit it. You don't necessarily want to be hitting that in front of you. Difficult overhead out of the air. Love 15. backhand volley cross court with a little back turn and everything she might have a lot of power and we've talked about that all week but I tell you what she has some beautiful touch at the net Ops not to challenge Kvitova gave a thump for the moment as that forehand misses the mark but ever so close as she's trying to find a way two millimeters from the back of that line that she missed by so wise not to challenge reverting back to the form that got her to five love for Kvitova the base 
baseline and it sets up for Kvitova. Double set point. And this is what I'm talking about. Azarenka is not doing anything different to what she was three or four games ago. The difference is all about the ability of Petra Kvitova to hit the big shots in the court. And she's done that two set points. about clarity of thought and in the last few points she's thrown in the slice backhand Katrina and that's what David talked about before the match she's done that really well in these last few points setting up set point number five Excited because they witnessed what was just a strange circumstance of five straight games, brilliant beginning, goes away, as you Australians might say, Renee Stubbs, on a bit of a walkabout, couldn't find her game, was back hot again, and now she finds herself with a one set advantage, closing in on perhaps the title here in her debut at the season ending championships. Absolutely. Just she's such a nightmare to play for any player because. They just feel like nothing is in their control. As a ranker didn't play a bad set, her winners and unforced errors weren't terrible. Maybe a little too many on the unforced errors, but what a difference. 
and there was a difference. We've seen it during the course of the week, Renee, but I'd like to revisit it, an expression you just used a moment ago. Clarity of thought for Kvitova. Sometimes she just loses that focus. What did you mean, clarity of thought? Well, it was obvious to me. The game plan was to slice, drop shot, use a little bit of variety, and I just felt like once she started getting ahead for love and hitting the ball so well, it was almost she lost what the game plan was to do. But she got there because she was using some variety. And David Kocher, her coach, was very adamant about that. And then all of a sudden, when it got to five all, the slice came back. And that really makes a difference because what it does is it brings her opponent forward into the court and then allows her to really use her power to drive them back off the baseline. You see Sam Stoza uses the slice as well. And she also is very good when she has clarity of thought in her mind and by that have a good game plan and stick to it dave taylor and i'm sure david costia is very adamant with these types of players who are big hitters to be very clear about what they want to do yes. Yes. poor old vika as a rankers on the other end of that up and down type of tennis from Kvitova today. down 5-1 in the first set against Aggie Radwanska the other day, Kvitova. It was kind of all over the place, not concentrated on the court. And you can see how quickly she can turn some matches around. Coming back to win that set 7-6. It's gone both ways for Kvitova this season because you got to remember back in Tokyo in the semifinals against Severus Vonareva, she was up 5-1. Lost that opening set in the tiebreak and was shut out in the second. Dismissed from the tournament. Well, that just shows you when things aren't going well for her, it's, it's, yeah, it's almost much. like a train that's on the track that doesn't have brakes, which is also why at the start of this tournament I picked her to win it because I felt like the train was back on the track. And when she gets going, it's almost like very unstoppable. She had that period after Wimbledon where everything was well and truly off the track. She said, I can't hit the ball even close to the court. Those were her quotes. in our production meetings. Renee Stubbs did, in fact, pick <laughs> Patrick Kvitova to win this tournament, very much like Martina Navratilova, who picked Kvitova to win Wimbledon after the French Open. A lot of people wasn't sure what the former great was talking about, but she <laughs> came to fruition there. Here is the numbers from that opening set that really started to look a little more similar because of the fact that Kvitova upped the ante when hitting the ball all over the court, not able to find it with those 16 errors. Well, a few more winners on her side, and also the big one for me, three out of seven break points and two of two. Great record for Azarenka being perfect on her break point opportunities, but the bottom line is uh, Kvitova won the big one when it counted at 5-6 or 6-5, depending on how you look at the server. Fifteen 
15. We're just at the mercy of the power of Kvitova. She hit that from behind the baseline. Azarenka not even in our shot. It just shows you how lethal the power is off of her racket. Oh! Oh, Even in the second set. us a chance to remind you once more about that website. I think it's the internet, Renee. I think you've got a computer somewhere that you plug into. You should if you don't, or maybe you've got a little handheld device or one of those tablets. Anyway, it's at WTATennis.com, the official website of women's professional tennis. They have the Strong is Beautiful campaign that both of these women are featured in amongst 38 of the top players and some of the past greats all out there showing the balance between beauty and some of the best athletes in the world. Strong is beautiful. You can access it by going to WTATennis.com. of the year you start on January 1st with all the players trying to well of course have a tremendous season maybe win a couple matches a couple titles maybe a couple majors in the case of Kvitova her first when she captured Wimbledon this year but she couldn't have gotten off to a better start winning Brisbane running off those five matches picked up four more matches in Australia before losing in the quarterfinals to Zvonareva but all in all backing up the Brisbane title with the run in Paris or she beat Kim Kleister. She won 16 of her first 17 matches of the year. But as indicative of what happened in that opening set, then after that tremendous run and that great form, she stumbled a bit through Dubai, Indian Wells, and Miami, and then went to the clay courts of Madrid, won the title there, won Wimbledon, and then stumbled again through Toronto, Cincinnati, and a first round loss at the U.S. Open before she found her form in Asia and then won the title in Linz. Not showing some signs of youthful maturity as well and also how emotional she can get. It's usually as a record that's an emotional player, but she's really done a great job over the last 12 months of curtailing that negative energy. And now two break points for the Belarusian.
already looking ahead to next year, 2012. Time. Waiting for the next WTA event here in Istanbul. <laughs> well, it'll be about a year from now. Well, he's given his number out. <laughs> I want everybody in the world to call him. Oh, that's mean. <laughs> He asked for it. He's going to have his voice mail filled up at this point, but hey, you can't blame him. One of the hottest players on tour, literally coming in after having won Luxembourg, riding that match win streak to get to the final as Azarenko with the outright lead for the first time in this match, serving 2 1. Well, again, it's just not on the racket of Azarenka. She's going to continue to plug away, hit the winners when she gets the opportunity, try and not make too many unforced errors. But the woman down the other end just controls the match. Unforced errors or winners. perfect illustration of how to hit the most beautiful drop volley stayed down kept the racket up head up and Martina Navrilova would be very proud of that one Seven, eight, eight. Love must be so frustrated with herself she's been really out of the match gets the fight back gets an early break and then all of a sudden Three break points. Medeva's gotten a lot more looks. Certainly had those breaks early in the opening set before she broke to finish things off in that 12th game. Now looking to even the score. Very passive. And you see it from her illustration to her coach. On by saying, 15 points. Watch. To demonstrate for us. Might have been wise for Kvitova to challenge there. Sorry, Renee, that serve shown to be out. By a slight margin, but it will stand. really are about okay that's good enough let's get the point started because if you get that challenge wrong that's a point lost so not so difficult it's not so easy to make the calls on close calls for the players especially when that action is so quick no damage done to say the least they have broken each other in consecutive games and we remind you that facebook.com slash wta one more time this is the last day of voting vote for your favorite players and all discipline singles and doubles you can also have the breakthrough player of the year this is the last chance to cast your ballot This back end. 136 kilometers per hour to be exact. almost to go out wide with that second serve after the previous backhand from Azarenka. It's, it's
didn't get the feet up to that serve and really kind of just shanked it a little wide. her game and why she's done so well indoors and particularly on grass obviously winning at Wimbledon is that she continues to go for it to what could have has done. It's the Czech who has been just overwhelming. I mean, that's a, just a, an incredible uh, thing to see, isn't it? When you see nine from Azarenka and you think, okay, that's an average per match, and then boom, it's like they're scattered all over the place and so many just blasted on the line. Also shows you the power, Kevin, because a lot of those are in sort of not so close to the line, but still the balls hit so hard. And those are winners that are hit, winners off of them. Yeah, to hit through the court. And what you also saw just a few of, and that it is, bodes well for the future of Kuba, those drop shots, those inside the service line, those balls that were placed just short of the court. That all that power, well, she can use some finesse too. Some numbers from these opening Time. games already one set to the good for Kvitova, though down on serve second set. No surprise, Renee, to see Kvitova leading in both winners and unforced errors. Well, like I talked about, really, not a lot Victoria Azareg can do except what she's doing right now, which is hanging in there, hitting some good shots from time to time herself, and putting the pressure on Kvitova. A great match thus far for the finals. Yeah, from what started to look like it was just going to be behind the woodshed beat down. It was just going to be all one sided. Kvitova was going to march right to the winner's circle. Azarenka says, nope. I might as well give my lead. I will not just give this match to you. It also shows me the immaturity level of Azarenka. We're going to see a challenge on the serve. She's been challenged a few times this week, that particular line judge, and has come out shining bright. Months ago, or maybe 18 months ago, as opposed to now, is showing up 
as best as it's ever done in this final. The biggest match of her career. She's getting absolutely smacked in the first set. Keeps the composure and look at the situation she's gotten herself back into. Eighteen months ago, I can pretty much guarantee you this match would have been over very quickly. Maybe two years ago, Victoria Azarenka has really just improved so much in her game, but the emotional outbursts, that's the big difference. Katrina can address some of that. Oh, we're sorry, Katrina. We keep throwing you under the bus there as the crowd suddenly just elevates their volume as we we're going. We we're talking about the emotional well-being of Azarenka and how that's informed her game this year. She's keeping things in check. Well, she's so calm out here. You're not seeing any extra emotion from her, positive nor negative. So it's very balanced right now as opposed to in the match when she lost to Bartoli a couple days ago. here in the booth might be thinking there's some Tasmanian devils running around on the court when Kvitova lets out that screech but <laughs> it's pretty I've never seen well no I have seen a Tasmanian devil chance for a fourth consecutive break of serve Clutch, sorry, Renee, from Vika. So a little bit of emotion, but nothing over the top. Sorry, Kat, I didn't know your mic was still open, but it's so exciting and, and intense right now between both the young ladies out there. WTA on Twitter for a behind the scenes look at women's tennis. Get the latest news, coolest photos, and videos at your fingertips. It's at twitter.com slash WTA. You can see some of the tweets also from players or even former greats, including 1999 champion Lindsay Davenport, who commented and tweeted, impressive way to close out the first set for Kvitova after being up five love. You can see the tweets of Lisa Raymond and responding to fans after she and partner Lisa Eber won the doubles title earlier today as she thanks her supporters at twitter.com slash WTA. Oh, 
unless, unless. Safety room. One of the cleanest winners of the day for Azarenka, giving it back to Kvitova. for both Kvitova and Azarenka. You just feel like the tipping point is somewhere right about now. This is a huge moment for both players. I think Kvitova really has to step up and put the ball back in play. as Rinka was able to really get a rhythm and get back into this match. But if Kvitova wants to get back on top and come out the champion, she has to continue to move forward and use variety. Shot, the slice backhands, and then the ability to flick this ball over the head of Azarenka. Perfectly judged top spin lob, and the racket of Azarenka just missing it. Well, just as I said, she did. And it's really, again, it's not so much what Azarenka is not doing. She is playing a consistent match throughout. It's Kvitova that's in control Ladies, of winning and losing the points. especially if it goes into the third set. No question this match is becoming very physical every game especially these ones that go a long time and they start adding up time. It starts taking it out of anybody.
back in Istanbul. Azarenka has already had one guy put his phone number on the screen for the world to see. They love her screen. There's Petkovic, who was an alternate here. She's got some fans as well. Never saw the court during this competition. The alternate, Marian Bartoli, did play against Azarenka on the final day of round robin play, but for Andrea Petkovic, no joy here in Istanbul as she just missed qualifying for the season ending championships. Azarenka, what a marvelous return. The composure after trailing five love opening set. Dropped that set, but has herself up a break here in the second. has just played such an up and down match and on the other hand as a ranker has just played such a good clean type of a match and the longer the match goes the better for her absolutely even on points one well, the reason I say that is because you just feel like as a ranker as long longer the match goes she's sort of staying in the same type of a zone with Kvitova, you just never know what's going to happen. And that could also be very dangerous on the other hand as well. So I think we're in for a very interesting end to this match either way. Well, that's as close as you can get it. second set and it'll be up to Kvitova to try to prolong their proceedings or indeed a decisive set awaits us. Both these women have had impressive runs during the course of 2011 with win streaks. Kvitova currently riding a nine match win streak if you include her title in Linz. And an 18 and 0 record indoors in 2011. Double faults to begin this night game. For Azarenka, she did come in here with a win streak because of her win in Luxembourg, but then lost to Bartoli. But she did have a 12 match win streak early in the year when she won Miami and Marbella back to back. That is tied for the longest consecutive match win streak of the year with Kim Kleisters and Serena Williams. physically it falls on the side of Azarenka. So what I would be telling Kvitova is you continually must go for it. Come in, keep the points short, because the longer the point goes, the better for Azarenka. It'll be interesting to see if Kvitova starts trying to come in a little more.
And just lunging at that forehand, and you just felt like the longer that point goes, Kvitova is definitely starting to look a little bit more exhausted, definitely, than Azarenka. And you have to think about that match yesterday with Stoza, that three set match, very physical. And then Azarenka, on the other hand, had a straight sets victory over Vera Zvonareva. And all of these matches start taking their toll at some point. She started the first day of play with the first match on on Tuesday. She had Wednesday off. So she's playing for her fourth straight day. Five of the last six. Now for Azarenka, because she won Luxembourg, she had to fly in on Sunday. She did not play the opening day of Tuesday. Renee, when you talk about the energy that's left, Kvitova is also on an emotional roller coaster today, which is draining. And as we've been talking about, Azarenka was just even killed. So that's saving her a lot of energy in that area as well. Azarenka playing her fifth consecutive day. And the woman from Belarus, well, she's still up a break. She'll serve for the second set. Bravo, Petio. Dlouho jsme čekali na ten servis do těla točený. Víš co, ona to z ruky strašně dobře returnuje. A teď si zahrála dvakrát takový to forehandový tělo točený a přišlo to, jednou byla chyba a jednou z to měla relativně nalitý. Jo, dokud si nejseš jistá úplně, že to trefíš totálně do rohu, anebo to zatočíš prostě, že tam nedošáhne, tak ona to jako perfektně returnuje. Takže tohle to tam vlož, jo? No a teď jak uděláš ten gen teď, viď? To je otázka, že? Prosím tě, nasaď. Nasaď trošku dřív zase, dřív vepředu na tu přípravu, ať tam máš čas. Ona hraje hrozně prvního servisu a tam, když trošku zaspíš, už je to hrozně těžký a ženetě, jo? Takže zůst... tak vpředu? Prosím? Zůsta, zůstaň normálně, jak, jak stojíš. Akorát nasaď, nasaď dřív na nápřev, jo? A zase to napal normálně do ní. A pak můžeš hrát úhel, jo? Zbytečně, a když nedá první, nervy, nervy ten druhý totálně na riziko. Napal ho, napal ho, ale zase klidně do prostředka. A pak už to ženeš do koutů, jo? Jdeme, jdeme. Fans for Petra Kvitova, hoping that she will win this title in her debut performance. It's a rarity that hasn't occurred very often. Only seven women have ever come to the season-ending championships and won it in their first year. She's going to try to apply the pressure now to Victoria Azarenka. Remember, Kvitova in the opening set twice served to finish things off. Couldn't get it done. Broken twice. She actually had to break Azarenka to take that one-set lead. Well, she's looking to see if the Belarusian will succumb to the pressure of serving for this second set once again. Will this be their second straight meeting that will go the distance of three sets? has just elevated her game really stingy on unforced errors only six in this set That was a great volley, but look at this ball on that very outside part of the line.
on the loose on base. Ever dangerous Same forehand though team. from Kavitova. Taking a hold of the point with the return of serve. Victoria Azarenka's going to have to get the serve in a good spot if she wants to maintain the momentum in these points. She'd say, okay, let's get this one to the back end and serve it well. And a clean winner off the racket. set. Azarenka could deliver if she converts her first set point. herself ready for a third set does because of rank and she really has shown her medal why she's one of the top players in 2011 and why she's trying to get to the number two ranking by virtue of earning it and she has made this a one set affair as they will battle for the second consecutive time of their five previous meetings the first four were all straight sets wins there were two for Azarenka two for Kvitova but their last meeting in the semifinals at Wimbledon it was Kvitova in the semifinals, winning in three sets to go on to win the title. Well, now it will be a Time. third set to decide the champion of this prestigious event. On the right, Stacey Allister, the CEO of the WTA. Mr. Ricci Bitti, president of the International Tennis Federation. Jeff Don't hide, Stacy. Come on out. You deserve it. A little air time yourself. Congratulations to Stacy Allister for just signing a five-year extension on her deal to be at the helm of the WTA. Turkish Tennis Federation for making 
you know, such an exciting event. They've had more than 70,000 fans over six days, averaging 11,800. Oh, and that was the first time we've seen a bit of a miss that type of a volley. And is fatigue a factor in missing a shot like that? but also mentally and the drain and the strain of this week's tennis and winning every match is that starting to take its toll on Petra Gavidova as well as of course the fantastic fighting spirit and tennis from Victoria Azarenka world number two on the line today along with the victory Slam has not been to the finals of the championships and her record and break points today has been absolutely outstanding, especially against the serve of Petra Kvitova, one of the best. Kvitova is going to get back into this match even though it's tied at two sets, sorry, one set all. She's going to have to get some free points with this big serve serve some energy or she's going to be in lots of trouble She was sort of screaming because she was so excited. She said to me, I said, it doesn't bother you, does it? She goes, no, because she's such a nice girl. And you know it comes from this place of emotion and not sort of in your face. Not gamesmanship. No. Oh, well, that could change if she continues running up years with five or six titles. <laughs> Opponents on the other side of the net might just say, all right, we're a little bit tired of this. You keep winning, and then you keep screaming. But yeah, it certainly seems to be a pure exclamation and not something to try to get in her opponent's head. She tries to fend off a third break point. There have always been, each and every match, just a tiny bit where she's faltered and hit a speed bump. But it hasn't hurt her yet. She is unbeaten here in Istanbul as she produces one of her 18 forehand winners amongst the 30 total on the match.
say that is because she hit the big forehand and followed it up into the net and kind of got a bit of a floater and try and then hits the drop volley that is usually under pressure a lot more difficult than to hit than a hard volley but uh, really doing a pretty good job at holding off some big points here After saving four great points. Wants to hold for the third consecutive set to begin. She has served first in each of these three sets. in the first set and you'll see with Kvitova just the unforced errors completely different to the, what they were in the first set 16 unforced errors a very methodical set from Azarenka and the big difference again if you'll see one of three break points Azarenka two of three and when I look at stats and I see mistakes and winners and all of those things matter of course movement to the net how aggressive you've been but really what what comes down to winning the big point and sometimes it's just one or two break points that can be the difference between winning and losing a match and that's very obvious in both the first set and the second set slide into one spot below Caroline Wozniacki. 60 for Kvitova. If she gets the victory, that will be how many wins, match wins to be more specific, in 2011. Only Wozniacki has more than 60 at this point. That will be the sixth title of the year for Kvitova or the fourth title for Azarenka. Thank you. because that's the second time Kvitova's made that gesture that people are using flash behind the court. mistake on that easy forehand. You see right there, hopefully he's got his finger either over the flash or it's turned off. touch <coughs> and what makes her shot effective anybody who hits the ball as heavy and as deep as someone like Kvitova when they decide to throw in that short one it is so much more effective just because their opponent tends to be a long way behind the court Davai Vika which means come on in Russian Break. 
or even on break points made in this match. Simultaneously, yeah. might have gotten it off there, but the decibels of Kritova almost drowning out the youngster from Belarus. Uh, she has dampened her spirit ever so slightly. The air gets Kritova to two love. Do you think they care? I mean, really? Both of them. Are they showing enough emotion? <laughs> Well, I think they are. You guys have alluded to it this whole time. They're feeding off this crowd. I mean, this is an unbelievably in tune tennis fan base that doesn't have a lot of tennis history to build on. They're just enjoying these world class athletes. Uh oh. It'd be interesting to see how Azarenka rebounds in this game. I mean, that was a huge miss and an early unforced error in that rally. Is that a reaction towards her bench? Is it a negative one or a positive one, Kat? Uh, looked pretty negative to me. <laughs> Sounded as such, too. down the line and the look over to her team as to say, come on, I am back now. Scoreline. She is going to be nervous until the very end of this match. what David Kotcher wanted her to do from the start of this match till the end and she's implemented it again now using the slice the drop shot and more variety start to this third set by Petra Kvitova. She is the one who is dictating play. It is on her racket to this point. How so? Well, the statistic of winners by set in this third set. Kvitova 
eight winners, Azarenka none. And the scoreboard reflects as much as you see. The woman from the Czech Republic, she has found her form once again. Does Azarenka for another time have the answer? Serving at love three. over Azarenka to start this match. Believe me, Victoria Azarenka is not going away. She's going to maintain her composure like she's done from start to finish today. And she's going to meet, make Kvitova beat her today. how difficult this match is going to be for Petra Kvitova to put away. She may be the Wimbledon champion, she may be three in the world, but she knows the nerves are going to be a factor in putting this match away. Her job is to stay in it. job when you're at the net as a ball kid. shots now something that we'll have to watch for again she hasn't been dismayed when she's fallen behind she showed that in the opening set and as Renee alluded to it's just a testament to why these two players are fighting it out on the last day of the most important title in women's tennis it's a bit of a once again just tries to add more to the buffer that is her lead in this third set Said in the rain, said, 
Don't let the immersions get too high because the downs can be so down as well. And the one thing Azarenka has done throughout her career is that what you're seeing right now from Kvitova. The highs and the lows are so extreme. That's what she's done so well. Maintain the same composure, almost like Chris Evert, just from first to last point, the exact Whoa. same way. Whereas Kvitova, as Katrina talked about, is going up and down with her emotions. And that starts draining you. And when things get a little tight, some problems can occur. Legs, second you know, it's, that, it's that fine line, that's that very double-edged sword of having that real fire in your belly. And she obviously has that. But sometimes it may affect her get tight. We'll be watching to see how it affects her. On base, on base. 15 on. I can tell you, when you are nervous, and you're a big server, getting three points like that off of the second serve feel very, very nice in situations like this. very sideline. A bit of a doing a good job running over there and just crushing it on the baseline. Just trying to control her heartbeat right now, her breathing, really get everything as almost as quiet as possible before the point starts. Right now, they grab the towel, getting the thoughts straight on where they want to serve, what they want to do, and also their heart rate is on probably about 180 right now. They want to get it back down so that it doesn't affect the way they swing at the ball. Getting Kvitova on the stretch and then that is a shot you can guarantee that Vikazarenka is going to make nine times out of ten.
time. Seven times in the history of this event, the season ending championships, a player has come to the biggest tournament in women's professional tennis and won in their first year. Tracy Austin in 1979, Andrea Yeager in 1981, Lindsay Davenport, Martina Hingis, Serena Williams, and Maria Sharapova have all done it. Well, for Petra Kvitova, as she is trying to put her stamp on this tournament, she is two games away from doing so. Standing in her way is a very talented Victoria Azarenka of Belarus, who is serving at 1-4. Just a single break of serve, the difference at this point. in the first set. Petra Kvitova can go off the rails as well. So it is Azarenka's job again to hang in there and be a real pain for the young Czech player. That's only the third double fault in the match for Azarenka. Both of the women have really served terrific today. One double fault for Kvitova and only her third of the match, first one of this particular set. Makes up for it there with a beautiful flat serve out wide. That's right, and trying to get the four two, obviously, it would be. Devastating to be broken here and allow Kvitova to serve for the match. Just to clarify my point coming back, Renee, Tracy Austin, Andrea Yeager, Lindsay Davenport, and Martina Hingis all made the final in their debut performances at the year end championships, but Serena Williams and Maria Sharapova won in their first year in 2001 and 2004, respectively. So Kvitova trying to be the third to do so. Seven five. Does she start to sense the magnitude of the moment? How close she is to the finish line. Important for Petra Kvitova to remember the game plan right about now. This is where you can't think about the finish line. You have to think about what's worked for you all day. And hitting winners all over the place is one thing. But sometimes is that not happening? You have to set the point up. She used the slice we saw. That was very effective for her, drop shots and then setting up the big winner. So we'll see how clear she is with her thoughts right now. Sometimes when a player gets nervous or a little frustrated, they go with what they feel comfortable with. And what she's comfortable with is continuing to slap away and hit try and hit winners all over the place. But sometimes you just need to use the brain and the game that you have. That's a good example. 
on this. On feet this. were not in position Continue. to hit that particular shot that probably should have gone back cross court. She tried to go for the big flashy backhand down the line. And this is where you have to have composure and belief and trust in what you're doing. because oh, she's kind of like the right-handed version almost of Kvitova. Doesn't have quite the power on the backhand side that Kvitova has. But Sam sometimes relies too much on a big first serve and doesn't use the serve to set up the forehand or move the ball around the court to move her opponents around to hit the forehand. And Kvitova needs to do that as well. Now you think, okay, I went to the T then, she got it back pretty well, what do I do, where do I serve this one? All this goes on in a brain of a tennis player after a let is called. And you can see maybe why she's clear. That went to the backhand, the better side of Azarenka. And she made a good swing at that one. And that one, she decided to go to the weaker side and pay dividends because an error on the return. champion of the 2011 year-end final as Kim Kleister is unable to defend her title this year. 2011, who will be etched right underneath the great Belgian Time. on the trophy that bears the name of one of the true greats, Billie Jean King. Ironically, never champion at this event as it began back in 1972. It's about the only title <laughs> that Billie Jean didn't garner over the course of her career, at least as it is called the WTA championships. It's been a long day for Vika Azarenka. She's been up, she's been down. She's been seriously down and she's come back. She's done it all and she's never wavered, but she's in dire straits. It is a hold or go home and pick up the runner-up trophy as she serves 2-5. Bye. 
Finish second. 15 love. The only thing Fika Azarenka can do at this point is to win her service game and force the young Czech to serve the match out. Keep your composure at all times. there on the line you played as well as you can you just didn't come away with the win today very necessary for her to hang in here sort of like what i said to sam stoza yesterday i said sam you know bad luck you had a great match you got very close she said yep if I was going to go out or lose, I'm glad I went out like that because she gave it everything she could and it really was on the racket more of Kvitova in the end who played a great game to serve it out. Well, Renee, you cannot count Victoria out. I've been watching her the last couple of games and she's been silently showing positive emotion. Just walking, shaking her head, pumping her fists. So it's not a lot of outward emotion, but she is displaying a lot of positivity. Absolutely. Like I said, she knows how difficult this moment is for Kvitova to put away. shot from Kvitova and then a perfect passing shot on the baseline. That was almost a little <laughs> too close for my comfort if I was Kvitova. pressure from Azarenka. She'll get a little bit nervous. She just steps up and clocks the backhand down the line. Two hours, 22 minutes, teetering on the edge right now.
Linux Christmas. Not only a triumph, Kevin, but the second biggest win of her career. The championship just below a grand slam as far as level. and the support from the crowd right now. championships and serving for the title. would be running through her body her heart rate would be flying it would be absolutely imperative i think for her to hit a lot of first serves in the court and try and set up the point to be put away early and not a long point where she directs a lot more of her shots to try and win this match.
stayed in the match physically stayed in the match but it's that one right there that proved why she is one of the best players in the world right now well, what an opportunity for the 21 year old Wimbledon year in championships it's her sixth title it matches Caroline Wozniacki for the most this year her 60th match win a stellar performance running through this tournament five and oh and she just might be poised in 2012 to make a run towards that number one ranking because she's only one spot away at this juncture. She's going to be the new world number two. She is Petra Kvitova. She's standing by with Katrina Adams. Petra, congratulations on a phenomenal tournament. What a wonderful display of tennis today. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, it was really fighting. I mean, every game, Every set was very close, and I'm really happy that I made the important, important points. Uh, and uh, I mean, it was unbelievable tennis, and uh, you know, it was the final, so why not? <laughs> you were 19 and 0 indoors, and Renee Stubbs said that you, every tournament that you won was also with a roof structure. What does that do to your game? Well, you know, I don't know. When I'm in the indoor, I mean, I'm feeling like a different, different person, and I know that I have to play my game and uh, almost everything is inside in the court. At the end of 2010, you were ranked 34. This year, you are a Wimbledon champ, a year-end tour champion, and the number two player in the world. Did you dream of that at all at the end of last year? No. <laughs> really. Uh, I mean, uh, when I started this season, it was uh, we didn't have a like, goal or something like that. We wanted to just improve my game and uh, look at this. I'm number two in the world and I won the November and championships here. So, I mean, it's a dream. Congratulations on a terrific tournament from start to finish and being the year-end champion. Well done, Petra. Well, she'll be delighted. She will receive her trophy and her massive check. And that will be for $1.75 million. And truth be told, to the aggressor, the spoils, it was Kvitova who put the pressure on. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. Amazing. That really is the big difference. The one break point that she won over Victoria Azarenka, 5 of 12 as, as opposed to 4 of 9, was really the big difference because it was 6-3 in the third. And that's one break a serve. 42 winners. 42 unforced errors. I mean, it's all on the racket of Petra Kvitova, and that's why I believe that we are looking without question at a future number one.
in 2011. The spoils have come. There'll be another trophy and a massive check coming her way. And what a basis to build on for 2012. So the ceremony to present the trophy and checks to the winner and runner up down on the stadium floor. Here's your master of ceremonies, Andrew Crest. Of the WTA, Stacy Allister. WTA CEO Stacy Allister. President of the Turkish Tennis Federation, Ayda Uluç. Türkiye Tennis Federasyonu Başkanı Ayda Uluç. The President of the International Tennis Federation, Francesco Ricci-Bitti. Uluslararası Tennis Federasyonu Başkanı Francesco Ricci-Bitti. The CEO of Turk Economy Bankası, Vero Jivil. Türk Ekonomi Bankası Genel Müdürü Vero Jivil. And our tournament director, Marcus Gundhart. WTA Turnuva Direktörü Marcus Gundhart. And now I'd like to take this opportunity to give my microphone to Stacy Allister. Eaction Lar. You have been amazing fans all week. And my only regret is we can't take you with us. Sesi diyor ki İstanbul'daki kalabalık için harika bir seyirciydiniz. Keşke sizi de beraberimizde götürebilsek. Nereye gidersek. Tonight as I watched the match there was a sign that says exactly how we feel. The sign said, we can't wait for the next WTA. Bu akşam maçı izlerken bir pankart gördüm dedi. Pankartta bir dahaki WTA organizasyonunu görmeye beklemek de sabrımız yok, çabuk olsun yazıyordu. Ben de tüm kalbimle aynı şeyi hissediyorum. Şu anda da Barkovizyon zaten görüyorsunuz. Bakın. I know the players can't wait to come back to your wonderful country for the 2012 TEB BNP Paribas WTA Championships. Ben de diyor bütün kalbimle inanıyorum ki tenisçilerimiz, oyuncularımız bir sonraki sene tekrar burada olmak için heyecanla buraya gelmeyi bekliyorlar yeniden. In appreciation for everything the Ministry of Sport, the Turkish Tennis Federation have done for the WTA, the players would like to give Ida a replica of their Billie Jean King WTA Championships trophy. Teşekkür ederim. WTA olarak Türkiye Cumhuriyeti Gençlik ve Spor Bakanlığı'na, Türkiye Tenis Federasyonu'na çok teşekkür ederiz dedi Stacey. Ve kendilerine bir WTA olarak bir hediye takdim ettiler. And now I would like to give this microphone to Mrs. Ida Uluç. Çok sevgili tenis severler, geldiğiniz için çok teşekkür ediyorum. Böyle bir güzel tenis haftası yaşadık hep beraber. Sizler olmasaydınız bu turnuva hakikaten olmazdı. Bu kadar güzel olmazdı. İyi ki geldiniz. Ayaklarınıza sağlık. Çok teşekkür ediyoruz. Ben de Türkiye Tenis Federasyonu olarak açıkçası hepimiz adına, sizler adına da WTA, WTA CEO'su ve başkanı Stacey Allister'a Türkiye adına dediğim gibi sizin adınıza bu hediyeyi vermek istiyorum. And now I would like to take this opportunity to 
start our trophy presentation officially and invite our doubles finalists to join us. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Katarina Serbotnik and Kaveta Peshke. Their 18th final together. They are quite a doubles team. And before we hand the trophy to you, I just want to give an opportunity to talk to both of you for just a moment. If you want to face out this way and just what an incredible week and the love that is outpoured for the two of you at Istanbul, you have to be thrilled. Oh, definitely. We had a wonderful, wonderful tournament. And not only the tournament, the whole year was, was incredible. I, I really do appreciate to play with Kata and I want to really thank her to have her as a great friend and wonderful tennis player on my side. Thank you. <laughs> Well, uh, I mean, yes, Kleta said it's been an uh, unbelievable week. Um, the fans here are just unbelievable. Um, thank you all for supporting also doubles, of course, singles, and, uh, you know, it's, it's a pleasure to play in front of you. Congratulations, and now to present you with your trophy, Francesco Ricci-Bitti. Your finalists, Katarina Sobotnik and Kaveta Peshke. And now to bring out your champions, everybody, let's hear it for Lisa Raymond and Liesel Huber. Their fourth title together, Liesel's 48th trophy and Lisa Raymond's 74th. First the U.S. Open and now the prestigious WTA Championships. The two of you have got to be so thrilled right now. Yeah, it's an amazing feeling. I mean, I don't think it's really set in quite yet. Um, you know, Liesl and I started playing together in, in April of this year and, um, you know, really kind of hit our stride this summer and with the U.S. Open and then be able to finish the year here is, uh, is pretty amazing. And to ask you, the number one doubles player in the world, have you ever been happier than this moment right now? No, definitely not, but I just want to say this couldn't be possible without TEP, BNP Paribas, without the Ministry of Sport, um, TTF, um, Sony Ericsson, this really, and all of you, this couldn't be possible, so thank you. Um, I'm going to admit it, um, I'm embarrassed to admit it, but I didn't know much about Turkey. I knew that there was beautiful rugs here, but I didn't know what to expect in this beautiful stadium. So out of the bottom of my heart, for my partner and from all the tennis players, I want to say this is the most amazing crowd we have played in front of. Wow. Well said, Liesl. Congratulations. And now to present you with your trophy, Mrs. Ida Ulus, the president of the Turkish Tennis Federation, tennis Federation to present you with your beautiful trophies. They are stunning trophies indeed. And may I present to you officially, everybody, your doubles champions, Lisa Raymond and Liesel Huber, with their beautiful trophies. We still have two lovely ladies to talk to everybody, so let's get right down to business and bring your finalists in singles up here. Please welcome Victoria Azarenka. <laughs> Victoria, you have produced some stunning tennis this year, and what a fitting way to play the, play, the way you played this week. How thrilled are you at, your, at the, what you're experiencing right now? You know, um, it's, it's really hard to lose, but I'm glad I uh, lost to such a champion who deserved really the win. You know, she, she played amazing today, and I uh, just, I mean, congrats, really congrats. Great job. Um, I, I mean, I gave it all today, and it wouldn't uh, be f that for you guys. You really kept 
kept me fighting the whole way, all the way through, and the, you're amazing, you know? I have no words to describe it. Um, I just wanted to, uh, you know, congratulate uh, also uh, Kvetas, uh, Petros, sorry, team <laughs> and my team. Thank you guys so much for being with me and all the sponsors, Teb, BNP Paribas, Turkish uh, Federation and Ministry of Sports. You did an amazing event. You know, I'm, I saw you in June and I really wanted to come here, you know, so I'm really glad I made it all the way through. Congratulations, Victoria. Let's present you with your trophy. Veral Jivil from the Turk Economy Bankasi present you with your beautiful trophy. And there is your finalist, everybody, Victoria Azarenka. And last but certainly not least, a, a, a happy face that all of us are becoming very, very familiar with. Your champion, everybody. Let's hear it for Petra Kvitova. Petra, you have a smile from ear to ear, and what a special day in your very young career. How can you describe and put it into words for us? Well, I don't know if I find some words, but, uh, but uh, when I started the season, I didn't expect that I will be staying here as a champion and uh, have a grand slam already. And uh, I mean, it's, really, it's uh, unbelievable to play here, and uh, the people was, was great, and uh, it was nice to play too. To hear. And I mean, the final was really fighting, and I have to congrats to Vika because she, you have a great season, and good luck to next season. And of course, that I have to thank you all my team who support me all the time, not only this week. And uh, I mean, it's Unbelievable to have you here with me all the time. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Kabeta. And I know that you want to get this beautiful Billie Jean King trophy to be presented to you from Tamer Taspinar. And that is a beautiful trophy indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, your TAB WTA Championships Istanbul champion, Petra Kvitova. As we're getting these photographs taken, if Fadik, you can help me translate a little bit because my Turkish has not been great this week. I'm learning a little bit, but I just want to say to each and every one of you while we're having photographs taken of all these incredible dignitaries and players that the crowd here in Istanbul this week has been record setting. Every smiling face and every cheering individual has made this a tournament that none of us will ever forget. So thank you from the bottom of our hearts and we can't wait to see each and every one of you in exactly one year for sure. Evet, Andrew birkaç bir şey söylemek ve paylaşmak istedi sizlerle. Bana da tabii onun sözlerini sizlere çevirmek kalıyor. Uh, şu anda fotoğraf çekimi yapılırken şunu söylemek istedi. Bir hafta boyunca İstanbul seyircisinin gülümseyen yüzü, yürekten katılımı bu turnuvayı unutulmaz bir turnuva haline büründürdü. Bir sene sonra yine WTA Kadın Tenis Şampiyonası burada yapılacak. İstanbul tüm kalbimizle size teşekkür ediyoruz. And Fadi, if you can come over here. Şimdi top toplayan gençlerimize doğru ilerliyorum. How about a round of applause for our very talented and very hardworking line umpires. Let's hear it for them. Çizgi hakemlerimiz, onlara da dev bir alkış alalım. Bir hafta boyunca gözlerini bu sahadan ayırmadılar. And last but not least, how about our incredible ball kids? Let's give them a big round of applause. And finally, last but not least, may I say this correctly, because you've been teaching me all week, Igejilar. Let me translate. Andrew, bir haftadır Türkçe öğretmeye çalışıyorum. O da bana bir haftadır tenis terimlerini öğretmeye çalışıyor. O Türkçeyi benden daha iyi öğrendi. Ben tenis terimlerini hala öğrenemedim. Igejilar İstanbul. Ben Andrew. Ben Fadik Sevin Atasoy. Burada sizlerle 
raketin ucundan fırlayan tutkuyu paylaşmanın mutluluğunu yaşadım. İyi ki varsınız, harikasınız. Well, this might be a familiar scene in 2012 and for the next couple of years. Get used to that young lady, the 21-year-old from the Czech Republic, Petra Kvitova, holding the Billie Jean King trophy. She is somebody who's going to be winning a lot more titles. And watch out, Caroline Wozniacki. Those footsteps you hear are Kvitova coming up from behind in the number two position right now. She's going to be looking for number one next year and you'd be surprised if she doesn't make a serious push. It's been a tremendous week. The support of record crowd, 70,000 plus, if that's any indication. Boy, nobody can wait to get back to Istanbul in 2012. Well, the best 16 players of 2011 convened and two titles have been decided. And we will set, bid you adieu now from Istanbul. We will remind you that for daily match highlights, player videos, score updates, tournament information, and WTA news, log on to WTAtennis.com. Duplication, reproduction, or retransmission of the broadcast without the express written consent of the WTA is strictly prohibited. It's been our pleasure to be bringing you this tournament. The 16 best, eight singles, four doubles teams. They all competed in Istanbul, and the two titles were decided. Congratulations to Lisa Luber and Lisa Raymond, your doubles champions, and of course, Petra Kvitova, the singles champion. But each and every player that was here in Turkey relished their moment here. They have all expressed interest in coming back. It's no surprise, as well as the support was in evidence here at the Sinan Erdem Dome. So for our entire talented crew, it has been our pleasure to bring you the season-ending championships for Katrina Adams and Renee Stubbs. I'm Kevin Skinner, bidding you adieu for the time being. We hope you'll join us in 2012 for more exciting action from the WTA. But for now, we step aside and say you we hope you've enjoyed watching the 10 BMP Paribas WTA Championships Istanbul. We will say so long or hoş çakol. Goodbye from Turkey.